Hi guys, this is Mark Jans from Epica. You're watching Pure Great Audio. Uh, extreme story regarding luggage in general is uh, that once I was also looking outside the window, our guitar case says handle with care, and there was a guy and I saw him literally lifting the cases above his head and throwing them like this. Why he did that, I don't know. But I wanted to go out of the plane to kick his ass. Why? And then the next case. BAM! <laughs> oh, that was so annoying. Luckily the guitars were still uh, okay, but uh, when you see somebody treating your equipment like that for no reason, it makes you furious. Yeah, the, the good thing is I'm, <laughs> I'm not so drunk. Uh, I, I don't get to the point that I don't uh, know what I'm doing anymore. So that doesn't happen to me, but uh, I, I once was very drunk uh, at the Graspop Festival in Belgium. And uh, that was the only time that I really didn't remember certain parts of the, of the evening. And uh, the thing was, I had uh, a full uh, glass of Jägermeister and the security didn't let me pass with, with the glass of Jägermeister. So I said, yeah, I, I cannot throw this away. Uh, what is this? Uh, no, you, you cannot take it with you, sir. You have to leave it behind. So I said, that's not going to happen. Glug, 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 glug. <laughs> I drank the whole glass, the whole cup at once. And from there on, I, I'm missing some parts. I only remember that I ended up at my own tent where I was sleeping because I stayed there for the whole weekend. And I remember at a certain point I was standing outside my tent and people passed by and they were laughing. So the next day I woke up, it's not a weird place but because I woke up where I had to wake up, but I was standing outside my tent like this and there uh, was a guy coming up to me and he said, you were really drunk last night. Eh? Said, yeah, why? Yeah, you were standing outside your tent naked. <laughs> then, then I know, knew why, why they were laughing. At that moment I, I had no idea. <laughs> Israel people go absolutely crazy but also in South America there are some countries where people go completely nuts I think Brazil where people go really crazy especially in the, the early days sometimes things happen like people hanging literally at our car when we were driving to the to the venue somebody wouldn't let go and the, the driver kept driving and the person hanging there <laughs> so I never never saw something more funny and at the same time worrying because that was dangerous at the same time. Yeah, the most extreme thing ever happened to us on stage was our keeper playing shitting his pants. And the thing was he, he kept playing. <laughs> so he kept playing and uh, I, I, I stood up to him and I was yeah yeah and he was <laughs> I thought, well, why, why, come on, keep going. No, he said, go away. <laughs> and then I, <laughs> I smelled something really bad, I, I went away and then the song was finished and he, he kind of, like a, like a duck, walked off the stage. <laughs> and, and it took a while before he came back. And then, then Simone, our singer, she, she, she said to the crowd, uh, unfortunately we have to wait a little bit because uh, our keyboard player shit his pants and he, of course he didn't want people to know but then he came back after 15 minutes and uh, people started uh, singing uh, I translated into English uh, shitting you do at home or lay or lay so the whole crowd uh, <laughs> cheering that it was quite uh, quite funny but you can also imagine what happened backstage because the, 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 it was a pretty little club and it was owned by a, by a family, uh, the guy with his wife and apparently the wife helped him getting, <laughs> getting rid of his pants in a, in a bath tube. It must have been quite a scenery. <laughs> there was one in Canada with, with all needles around the venue in Vancouver. That was already pretty extreme because there was all these junks and they, they threw the needles just on the floor and there was some people who, who didn't dare to, to come to our show because of that. But the most extreme I think was in, 
in Venezuela because the promoter had some financial troubles that we heard later uh, with some former shows he did before us and he, he paid with our money for the show he paid the other bands they, and then he got into problems with our show so what happened was he couldn't pay the venue and then he moved the show to uh, another place that was actually a marketplace and and we, we found out that place was the most dangerous place in, uh, in Caracas where there are drug dealers, people getting sh sh uh, shoot, shot on a regular base and literally we got messages from fans, they said I have tickets but I'm not going there <laughs> I'm not going to see you there, that's the most horrible place in town and Car Caracas is already quite a town and, uh, so we play there and fortunately nothing happened but uh, when you think back about uh, such things yeah people getting shot on a daily basis it's quite extreme yeah we were in uh, brazil as a uh, brazil as well right and uh, then the guy came with uh, with fried worms first or he came first with the with the it was mexico, actually. Oh, it was in mexico yeah they came with fresh ones. They had to fry. So. Ah, yeah, yeah. First, they, they, they and th yeah, the w these worms are alive. They are then in the, the basket and they are moving. And uh, yeah, not many dared, right? Uh, was I the only one who ate it, or we both did? Ah, uh, yeah. <laughs> Rob and I, we were the only ones who took one and ate it. And actually, it was not bad. It, it is extreme when you have such a moving worm in your hand and eat it. But it tasted pretty good, eh? because afterwards we tried to fry it one, and it was not so good as the. <laughs> yeah, that one was terrible. <laughs> yeah, that was that one was horrible. But the, the, the yeah, the alive one was uh, alive and kicking. <laughs> yeah, that uh, was during our DVD recording, uh, so everything has to go well. We, it was a one shot. And uh, somewhere I missed the cue. I step on the the, the, the the riser, and boom, the flame. And it, I smelled really the hair, burnt hair. My my arm hair was were completely gone. But I realized that I was really lucky because one centimeter further, and I would have been burned. So fortunately, uh, I'm still sitting here and I didn't pull a James Hatfield. <laughs>